future? Well, the Envision is like a complete suite of devices that is perfectly suited for eye care. So it's been developed for use on eyelids, which is really important to understand because a lot of technology is great on thicker skin, but your eyelids are the thinnest skin of your body. And you've got a cornea that's underneath that eyelid that's completely avascular. And if you heat that, or if you have too much energy hitting the cornea, you're gonna have big problems. So the genius of the Envision platform is the devices are made for eyes. Like that's the really big departure here. We've got Forma Eye, which is bipolar RF, which means I can do an RF procedure directly on top of an upper or lower eyelid with no shield. That's a big yeah. deal. That's saving me a lot of time. If I'm busy in the day and I have a regular practice, like a lot of other doctors in, let's say Canada, United States, Australia, they're busy, their days are fully back. They don't want to have to stop, come over, put the shield in for, let's say their op optometric tech to keep going. They want to just be able to delegate that. So that's, it's very safe, it's very delegatable, and I don't have to worry about having a shield for upper and lower lids. So bipolar RF, very important. Number two, you get Lumeca Eye, which is an IPL that again is designed for use on eyelids. You've got a very small spot size. I can get in right adjacent to the eyelash margin, which for most IPLs, like let's say the regular Lumeca, it's a larger crystal. And that would be very hard to fit in on an upper lid. And so you have to be very careful and you can't get too close to the lash margin. You'd have to be like two millimeters away. Whereas now with Lumeca Eye, I literally can get in on the lid margin, which I could not do with any other device. So I really like that, you know, Inmodes went out, done the R&D and made devices that are very specific to eye care. And that I think has just been a complete departure from anything else. And then thirdly, you can get the Morpheus device, which has Morpheus 8 and Morpheus Prime. I see the future of optometry moving towards doing a lot of procedures on dermatochelasis, like the droopy, the early stage where the lids start to droop. You're going to be able to do a Morpheus Prime on that patient, thereby avoiding a blepharoplasty later down the road. And I think this is really appealing to my patients. Lots of people want to avoid surgeries, especially blepharoplasty, which is um, kind of a very uncomfortable procedure and can cause a lot of other problems like severe dry eye when you do that. The goal when I'm, when I'm treating patients in my office is you have really two groups of dry eye patients. You have the group, the smaller group that are very symptomatic and they come in and immediately announce I've got really bad dry eye. I want to get, you know, something done about this. They're very obvious, but again, they're late stage patients that are more difficult to treat. Then you have a huge group of people that are asymptomatic, that have the beginnings of MGD or dry eye. They just don't have overt symptoms yet. And if you can identify those patients and treat them early and not let them get to that late stage, that is the best outcome for your practice and for the patient. So, to me, it's important to identify asymptomatic patients. So that's one of the things that we've started to do differently now that we have this new Envision platform. I do a lot of diagnostics on my regular patients. So I think of dry eye just like I think of glaucoma and like I think of AMD. I want to screen every adult patient. I want to see, make a diagnosis early before they have symptoms or signs of damage to the eye and I want to treat them early. The outcomes are better, the patients are happier, they do not become symptomatic, and I think patients really respond to that. I show them diagnostics, I show them their gland dropout, I show them their MGD on an image, I show them their non-invasive tear breakup times, how poorly they're producing tears, and they right away, they can ignore, they see what I see. So I just educate my patients, I show them what I see, and I say, we can wait a year or two years, we're gonna lose some gland tissue or we can treat this early, fix this early, and everyone's gonna be better off. And I think patients, patients really, they respond to that, they get it. I have a lot of enrollment. I am extremely busy with this in my practice. 
and I have a regular practice. I do regular, uh, you know, routine eye exam. I sell glasses. I have a dispensary. I sell contact lenses. I, I fit scleral contact. So I needed to fit this into my everyday routine. What I didn't want to do is have something that's going to disrupt my flow and be so time consuming that I can't keep my regular schedule. So I, I include these patients right into my regular day. So what we do is an adult patient will come in, they'll do their regular check-in with my staff, they'll do a quick questionnaire about dry eye, we'll do two screening tests. We do mybography and a non-invasive tear breakup time. It takes literally two minutes. Yep. It's part of the package with OCT, with auto refraction, with NCT. So all those diagnostics are sent to my computer in my office. So when that patient comes in, I can immediately see if there's some problems here starting that the patient hasn't really experienced symptoms with yet. We can talk about that. And then if I enroll that patient into my protocol, I can delegate the bipolar RF to one of my staff. So I have four staff members that are trained to do the RF. It's extremely safe. I can have them do upper and lower lids. So when that patient comes in for their treatment day, my staff checks them in, gets them to do their consent, preps their skin, gets them into the treatment room, puts on ultrasound gel, does all their RF, they slack me or they, they have a little message kind of service in my office. They say, hey, Mrs. Smith is ready. I walk into the office. I do a manual gland expression because what, what bipolar RF does for you is it heats the gland very precisely, two millimeters right in the dermis where the glands are. And what people don't realize is the majority of dry eye is really MGD. 85% of all cases are simply blockage. The glands are blocked and we got to get them unblocked. And so historically, optometrists and ophthalmologists, we've been doing hot compresses and then trying to do a manual expression with, let's say, forceps or something or doing lipoflow. But in those procedures, you don't see what's going on and you're not heating right into the gland. With RF, you're heating the meibomian gland itself, then doing an expression, and it's far more effective than anything we've had before. What I do is I also combine that with my Lumeca eye, my IPL, on patients yep. where it's applicable. I can't do this on a Fitzpatrick five or six patient if, the, if there's too much melanin in their skin, but the majority of my patients I can combine. And so the same day that they're getting RF, they also get an IPL after I do the expression. And I do that myself. I put a stainless steel shield on the patient's eye and I do upper and lower lids because when your glands get blocked, like any other part of your body, inflammation ensues. So think of RF, bipolar is treating the blockage. So we're bulk heating and we're stimulating collagen growth with, with the bipolar RF. And with the IPL, I'm treating more superficially, and I'm trying to deal with the inflammation and any neovascular blood vessels. So it's the perfect combination. I can treat inflammation and blockage at the same time. I usually do four treatments, and we space them out about a month apart. And in my office, you know, as far as our reimbursement rates, I, it's all self-pay, yep. yep. but surprisingly, patients are very interested in new technology. They are interested in, in technology that's going to work better because historically, if you really look at how we've always treated dry eye as eye care professionals, we've really just treated it medically with drops. Mm -hmm. the patient on our official tiers, you would write a prescription for Restasis or Zydra. You'd put them on a steroid. And for the rest of their life, they're putting drops and drops and drops in their eyes, which unfortunately patients don't prefer to do that. They, they aren't compliant after a while and they're frustrated because if you look at the efficacy of, let's say, Restasis and Zydra, it's less than 30%. So to me, I've complete, it's been a paradigm shift. We've completely shifted away from using a medical form of treatment to basically rejuvenating their glands, getting their glands back 
getting them to produce their own cure film, much healthier, much better. And, and now the patient's happier. And if you look at the cost to the patient, if I write in Canada, if I write a prescription for restasis, it's going to cost that patient out of pocket $2,500 a year for the rest of their life. They're also going to be adding artificial tears all the time. There's the side effects. So it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And long percentage wise, there isn't a great outcome for a lot of patients. And so they're upset when they pay all that money and there's not a good outcome. Here, I'm getting an 85 to 90% success rate using technology. I'm doing four treatments, about $500 per treatment. So they're paying out of pocket 2000, but it's a long-term solution. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a healthier outcome because they're producing their own tear film. So we're shifting from a medical platform to more of a treatment platform. And that's been very successful. In Canada, the adoption of this has been very high. There are a lot of optometrists now doing this in Canada. And I think in the United States, and they're, they're just kind of launching Envision more so now in the U.S. I just did a, a lecture at Vision Expo East in New York last week. And, you know, the Americans are very excited and they've been... Um, you know, waiting for this because I think the real breakthrough, what I think is the breakthrough technology is bipolar RF. Because monopolar RF used on an eyelid, because you have to create a circuit on the back of the neck to the device, you've now got to protect the cornea with a shield. You, you don't have the efficacy because now that circuit is so long, it's very poorly controlled. You, you lose a lot of the effectiveness of the RF because that circuit is so long. And it's really not designed for an eyelid. It's designed for thicker skin. So to me, having the bipolar, because the majority of patients are MGD, that's the important technology. Every single one of my patients is getting Forma Eye and a gland expression. No matter what skin type, no matter what, they're every patient. Yep. The patients where I can add or I can augment with Lumeca Eye, I do that, which is a lot. But there are some patients that are very dark skinned, you know, types you can't do IPL on that I don't do that with. But I have a technology that I can use with every single patient.